I'm just about to start my second year of medical school and I wanted to make a video to pass on the things that I've learned about how to be successful because uh, uh, at first I really, really had a hard time in medical school and uh, then I learned some things and it's helped me out a lot and I hope that this helps some of you. So how to be successful. First of all, if you want to be successful in medical school, you need to make sure that you are always exhausted when you study. So never get any sleep uh, or just go to bed super late, like 3 o'clock in the morning, and then you know, wake up barely in time for class. Um, this will make sure that when you're in class, you're just completely, totally spent, and you don't get anything out of the lecture, and you don't understand anything that's being said, and that you can't remember anything if you, if you do understand it. And it also really makes sure that you're uh, super depressed and stressed and have lots of anxiety. Uh, these are great for uh, failing exams and, um, and also just basically having no desire to stay in the first place. And um, it also really helps to make sure that the entire next day is also completely worthless. Also, if uh, you want to be successful in medical school, make sure that you eat lots of junk food and never exercise. Um, you know, making sure that you don't exercise, you know, at least a little bit, it'll just ensure that you feel basically terrible about life and um, depressed. And that is super important if you want to have extremely ineffective uh, studying periods. And, uh, okay, <laughs> obviously, you know, this, it's obvious that these things are stupid that I've been saying, right? But, even though you know and I know that these things are stupid, lots and lots of medical students, including myself, have fallen into this trap. So why, why do we do that if we know that it's stupid? Why do we get no sleep, eat terrible, and don't exercise if we know that they're awful for us and will make us perform worse? This is why. Because when you get into medical school, you become insanely stressed. They throw tons and tons of homework assignments at you, uh, studying books and assignments and classes and lectures, and you just don't have enough time to get everything done, and you be, you become super stressed, and so you start cutting out on things like taking time to prepare a healthy meal or exercising or getting enough sleep, and then you fall into this trap. Basically, you become screwed, and this is this is what this looks like. So up here at the top, you have. Increased stress. And what causes this initial increased stress? Well, medical school does. They, they're going to throw way too much information at you than you've ever conceived imaginable of being able to complete. So all this increased stress is going to result in some bad health decisions. Decreasing your sleep, um, not taking time to exercise, uh, not taking time to eat healthy food. So you eat crap, you don't get enough sleep, and... Uh, you uh, you know you're not exercising at all and if you do these things you're gonna have bad health mental emotional health everything in your life is going to be worse and because everything's you're making these bad decisions you have bad health your your mental capacity is decreased your ability to memorize your ability to understand all that is going to be down the toilet and if all that's down the toilet you're gonna get bad grades and if you get bad grades that's gonna increase your stress uh oh we just started in a cycle here this is one of those like uh, uh, circling around, about to go down the tube. I mean, we're, it's, it's over. Okay. So, so my first advice is to get out of this bad circuit. Okay. And one of the ways to do this from the very get go, before I read this, I want to, I want to tell you kind of what happened when I went into medical school. When I first got in there, I just thought, you know, I've got, I've got a wife and I've got kids and, and, I, and I'm not trying to be a plastic surgeon or a, or a neurosurgeon or a, ophthalmologist. I just want to be a general practitioner. And so I don't need to, you know, get hundred percent of a class. And so I'm just, I'm just going to do what I need to do to, to pass the classes and that's okay. And that, that'll be fine. Well, that, that was a bad idea. I mean, it seems like a good idea, but it's not a good idea. That, that's a bad idea because you will achieve what you set out to achieve. And, um, and if you don't plan for success, then, then you're, you're going to end up, <laughs> you're going to end up failing. Uh, tell a quick story here. I'll read this off here. It says, um, apparently, I, I'm not much of a baseball guy, but I have a brother-in-law that, that shared this story with me. He says that even the best baseball players don't even have a 50% success rate in hitting the ball effectively. So that means when they stand up to the bat, 
not even half the time do they actually hit the ball. Um, so a reporter once was asking one of these, apparently just the top hitting baseball players of all time. And he asked him, you know, how, how are you, um, you know, what, what do you expect your, your batting average to be this upcoming year? And the baseball player said a hundred percent. And that of course is ridiculous. You know, nobody, nobody gets a hundred, nobody even gets 50%. So the reporter said, oh, okay, you know, very funny, whatever. But realistically, you know, what do you, what do you actually anticipate getting? And the baseball player said, look, no one has any business stepping up to that plate if they do not fully expect to hit a home run every time they swing. That, that, I mean, that seems, when you first hear that, you think, well, now you're going to get depressed because you're not doing well. But I really think there is a lot of power in intending to get 100%. If you think, all right, what can I do to get every one of these questions right? And you plan for that and you intend to do that. If you train for 100%, you expect 100%, you'll come much closer to getting 100% than if you expected or trained for less. So that right there actually changed a lot of things for me. He told me that story and I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to plan for, you know, rather than just planning, I just want to get a 70. Well, guess what? I was like about 70 in all my classes and that is a terrible position to be in. It was extremely stressful. But when I started planning for, you know, shooting for a hundred, well, I, you know, I started getting 87s in the classes and no, I didn't get a hundred percent. But I felt much happier getting 87s when I planned for getting 100s than planning to get a 70 and actually getting a 70. So I don't know, something something to think about. So I'm, you can pause the video, video here and read over this if you want to. But this is just an example of a learning model that you can adopt for yourself if you'd like to. It just shows kind of some basic steps, things to go over. So if, if you want to do well in medical school, you actually have to intend to do well. You have to set the goal. I want to, to get good grades. Don't say I'm going to get C's because if you get C's, you might end up getting D's. But if you shoot for A's, you may get A's and B's. So main thing here, though, is, is just the common sense of what I was talking about in the beginning. I mean, we all know that if we want to be successful, we have to be healthy. You're, if, if you're depressed and eating crappy food and not getting enough sleep, you can't. Your body's not functioning at full capacity. If your body's not functioning at full capacity, you're not going to be successful. So you need, you need to make time to schedule exercise. This will make you happy and invigorated. When you do sit down to study, your study time will be effective. One of the big things with I found is that I'll go down and I sit down, I'll start studying. And my mind just feels like mush and I just feel, oh, I just feel awful. But then I'll go and exercise for like just five or 10 minutes and I feel all invigorated and happy. And then I actually, I actually get something out of it when I study. That's so huge. Time spent not all time spent is, is equal. You need to you need to optimize your time. And next, you need to eat regular healthy meals. Now, this helps your brain, helps your body, helps everything inside of you work better so that you can perform better. And definitely make sure you're getting about eight hours of sleep. I function okay on seven, sometimes six, but shoot for eight and everything in your life will go better. Your study time will be optimized. You know, that the extra two hours of studying that you could fit in there is not worth the sacrifice of the two hours of sleep. So uh, moving on here, next bit of advice is to seek advice. When I first got in there, I asked people for advice and I tried to figure out what was good. And I got some advice and I, I kind of stopped there. You need to keep asking people, you know, try to get feedback, really see if you can pick people's brains. Um, you need to find out what the people are doing who are successful and, and try what they're doing because there's a reason why they're successful. This is a quote by Tony Robbins says, if you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you want and copy what they do and you'll achieve the same results. Now, granted, everybody's different and it also takes a little while to learn certain styles. Like some people can learn really well, you know, through a certain method and maybe that's because they they're familiar with that method and they, they've practiced that method and it works for them because you know it's it's a skill that they picked up so there, there's some other variables in there but in general definitely seek advice and try to try to do what, what people are doing who are successful next is is thinking positive and this sounds really like a basic a generic thing but it really is it really plays a huge role in kind of the psychology behind learning because they found they've done studies and they, they found out that your brain will actually only memorize things that it perceives as being important. So if I just rattled off some numbers like um, five, three, eight, two, one, six, five, seven, 
you know, whatever. And I told you, oh yeah, that was, uh, that was the number of rocks in my shoe. Well, your brain's not going to pick that up. What if I said, you know, five, three, eight, six, seven, two, whatever the numbers I said, yeah, those are the uh, lottery numbers. And if you tell that to somebody, you know, you'll win $10 million. I mean, you'll, your brain will, will hang on to those numbers more if it perceives it as being something important. And, and you need to, you need to approach medical school that way. You need to really try to connect yourself to what it is that you're learning and try to always keep this relationship to the material strong. And before you start studying, try to orient yourself and convince yourself that you want to know this material. Even if it seems maybe boring or not important, convince yourself this is important to me. This is something that I want to learn. And, um, and if you're able to do that, then your brain will just you know subconsciously hold on the material better. And you need to have an attitude when you get into this, you know, make, make it a positive attitude of confidence in your ability and, and in the importance of the material. If you start being critical of yourself or critical of the professor or, or, or the material, it's going to undermine your brain's ability to learn the material. When you come into a situation of studying, and I, I've been guilty of these, you know, these sorts of things, um, you need to you need to think positive. Don't say things like, you know, this information is important or oh, this class is so disorganized or this exam was all messed up or I'm just not good at this stuff or they, they are the problem, you know, the teacher or whatever. Or, or I, I don't have, you know, just you, you can't you can't say these negative critical things to yourself because it's not focusing on solutions rather than saying this class is so disorganized. Say something like. How can I organize this material better? Instead of saying that exam was all messed up, you think, how can I prepare better for next exam? Instead of saying, you know, I'm not good at this stuff, ask, your, ask a question like, how can I get good at this stuff? So you need to get your mind thinking in positive directions. And uh, doing that will make it so that your mind actually pays attention to what it needs to do to be successful. This next part is possibly the most important practical thing that you could get out of this, this whole um, presentation. And that is a study journal. So this is something that I started doing and it completely transformed everything about the way that I study. I kept track of all the things that I needed to do, all the lectures that were being taught. And then I, then on the, on the top here, so over here are all the lectures being taught. These are the different classes and the different colors. Uh, this would be like pathology. This would be biochemistry. This would be um, physiology. This is pharmacology. And then on the top here are the days of the week. And so I looked at how much time I was spending in these different classes and I started keeping track of it. You know, how much time have I spent studying this one lecture? Wow, it looks like I spent, you know, 13 hours studying this first lecture, but I only spent five on these ones. So then I might need to know, okay, I need to spend more time on these ones. Only four on this one, I need to spend more time there. Just keeping track of it, recording what you're doing, gives you more motivation to do it, to get to it, to get it done and to not forget about it. See, for example, look here, I spent three days without reviewing this lecture. Here, I spent four days without reviewing this lecture. Um, that's enough time to completely forget the material. Here I went, you know, four days without looking at anything about chemistry. That's way too long to be successful. Now, and some, sometimes in here you'll see zeros. That's because that's a fraction of an hour. So it might be like uh, 15 minutes or something. And that's important to record. It just, you know, spending a little bit of time there can make a big difference. So, a lot of times what happens, at least what was happening to me, is I'd sit down and study and then I would you know, open up my emails or I would open up Facebook or you know, something like that. I'd start talking to somebody and I'd realize that I was wasting all this time that I, I didn't even know that I was wasting until I started recording it. Because when I go to record the stuff into this chart here, I can't put time in if I don't actually spend the time doing it. If I spend half an hour talking to somebody, I can't record that. And so when it comes down to the end of the day and I'm recording how many hours I put in up here, the total hours for the day, Man, you know, I only spent nine hours studying that day or six hours that day. Why? Oh, yeah, I talked to somebody for like half an hour and then the other person came by, I talked to them, and then I spent an hour on Facebook and then I spent half an hour, you know, start reading some emails that, I, that were interesting or whatever. Like, and all suddenly, wow, that cut in like four hours of my study time. And so when I'm recording my hours, I'm more careful not to waste little bits of time because I can see how much they add up when it comes to the end of the day. You're realizing that, you know, an hour in a day, an hour a day ends up to being 30 hours in a test block. 30 hours is the difference between an F and an A in a class. Just one hour a day. So that, that one hour of, you know, checking Facebook. Now, not to say you can never take breaks, but it can get out of hand really fast. So 
you need to recognize in medical school that you have more classes and more lectures than you have the ability to keep track of unless you record it. At least that's the case if you're me. If I don't record this, I can't keep track of all this stuff. I don't know what days I study what lectures, and so I'm going to miss out on, on reviewing it. I'm going to miss out on actually, you know, I can't remember, have I studied this lecture? I think I did. Turns out I only looked at it for half an hour. You know, and it's, it's just too much information to keep track of in one test block. And also, if you don't review the material, you're going to forget it. So not keeping track of your hours is, for me, that was that's the kiss of death. And when I started actually keeping track of the hours, it changed everything around for me. So this is this is just a big blow-up picture of what this might look like. But you can pause this and kind of see how you can create this yourself. Um, next thing is scheduling out my day. Not only do I record what I do in the day and, and have a, a task list, but then I need to sit down at the beginning of the week and I'd go to my calendar. So over here is kind of what it looks like in Google calendars. And I would just create this. Okay, so I'm going to spend an hour and a half here, an hour here, you know, an hour, whatever. Divide up my day, where I'm going to spend the time. And now I would end up changing this every day. I would change this. It would never be exactly what I planned. But at least I went into the day with some kind of gauge on what I needed to do. Now, if I started doing poorly, let's say on the last test block, I did really bad in biochem. Well, then on the next test block, I would schedule a little bit more time for biochem. And let's say that phys, I absolutely got 100% on it. And I was, you know could do no wrong. It was super easy. Well, I would schedule a little bit less time in that class. This kind of helps you to, to figure out where to put your time. Um, kind of works in conjunction with keeping track of your grades as well. I would highly recommend keeping track of your grades so you know where to spend your time. So this isn't actually like pictures of what I'm describing. This is just kind of a, um, this is not scientific, but this is just an illustration to kind of demonstrate the idea here. So the concept is that Immediately after class or immediately after you review something, you know, you you have all these connections made and everything's all, you know, it's all in there. All the information is, is where, how it needs to be. But after 24 hours, you lose like half of that. And within a week, it's pretty much all gone. And so this is the concept of reviewing material. They actually did a study on this and, you know, they presented some information to some students and they found that that the uh, after immediately after class you give them a quiz and the students would do really well on the quiz you know they get somewhere between you know they get like a really high high score on this information immediately after class after the after the present material was presented but if they checked up with those students you know 24 hours later they'd be down to you know most of the information of oh with down here 50 percent 50 percent information is gone it, um, and then, you know, a week later, it's like, wow, you know, 80% of it's gone. And within like a month, they've only, they only really retained 10% of the information. It's basically, they forgot it all. This is the, like the forgetting curve here. So what they did here is they found that, that if a student who had the material, uh, reviewed it right after class, oh, sorry, this is not a review after class. This is just rapidly forgetting it. This is where they reviewed it right after class. If they reviewed it after class, well, then, Within a day, you know, they're, they're retaining more. If they review it after class and then within the next day, they can get up to, and it doesn't have to be a long review period. This is just be a quick review that, that they retain more of it and they retain it longer. See how like doing this, the person actually, if they review it within 24 hours, they, um, they actually retain the information like three times more than the person who didn't review it. Whereas the person who reviews it, reviewed it like within the next week, you know, they've retained like half of the information. And then here, this person that reviewed it like a week and a month later or whatever, that person's retaining, you know, mass amounts of information. So I think, well, I don't have time to keep reviewing this material, but let me kind of demonstrate here that you do have time. In fact, you don't have time not to review the material. This is just an example of how this might look. So right here is the first, you know, um, you spend five hours sitting down and, you know, learning the material. Okay. So you get maximum retention. And then, you know, within 24 hours, you don't spend any time. And then, you know, a week later, you haven't spent any time. And then a month later, right before the test, you've forgotten everything. So you have to go back. And in order to get to the same level that you understood in the first place, you have to spend a full five hours to learn the whole thing. Okay. So total time spent here is 10 hours. And you, you learned it initially, and then you didn't, and then you crammed it right before the test to try to get, you know, the material in. Well, look at this. If you spend the initial five hours sitting in class, and then you spend just 30 minutes within the next day reviewing your notes and then 15 minutes within the next week and you know then another 15 minutes right with the test you retain all this information and you only spent six hours that's like half the time 
of of if you were to just learn it all initially and then forget it and then recram it again. You spent was ten hours. This is only six hours, but it has the same level of retention as if you were to you know do this ineffective not reviewing thing. So that's just kind of demonstrating you can't afford not to review the material really is when it comes to time because you're going to save a lot. And that's that's another four hours you could have spent studying some other class. So it really is in your best interest to review the material periodically rather than learning it once and then you know waiting until right before the test to review it again. So I have here, I have here some study methods and uh, there's lots of different study methods. You know, you can look through that. Um, Kind of talk about some of them. First one here is images. So uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a, I, I learn really well by by doing drawings of things. And if you can just create some, you know, just a silly looking image that encodes the information somehow, it can really help you to pull the information out again. If you if you've ever heard of Picmonic, this is a lot how Picmonic works. When I when I want to learn, uh, when I want to recall something. I can go back to the, the Picmonic image or maybe the image that I drew and I try to find where on the image the answer to what I'm looking for is encoded. This especially helped me in microbiology and pharmacology. So there, you know, there's some random microbe and I can't remember whether it's catalase positive or catalase negative. Um, so I'd go back to the image and I'd think, oh yeah, let's see, I drew this picture of a, of a guitar and it was, you know, it had a cat on the head. Oh yeah, so the guitar is... Uh, is a catalase positive, you know, and so the guitar represents, you know, some random, uh, <laughs> some random microbe. It doesn't doesn't always have to make perfect sense, but if just if you can recall it, it can really help. So the next thing here is mind mapping. This is just a way of getting the information as some kind of physical representation that that organizes it in your head. So you get the main idea here, and you branch off. Okay, then parasympathetic and sympathetic, and okay, this has this. So anyway, just it's just another way to do it. This is one that I found to be especially uh, helpful in a lot of classes. This is one for pharmacology I did, but it breaks down, you know, function, action, group name, group details, drug name. You get this all, all this stuff organized in here, and it's it can be a very condensed way to get a lot of information in, and a quick way to be able to also group things. Like sometimes, for example, in, in anatomy, you know, there's there's some muscle, and uh, the muscle is innervated by a nerve. So you can memorize each muscle and each nerve, or you can say, wow, okay, this nerve innervates like five muscles, and then group all those together, and this other nerve innervates three muscles. And then when you, when you organize it that way on a, on a spreadsheet, you can actually see where the different organization happens, or th these different things are clumped together, and memorize two things instead of 13 things. This is another thing that I did. This is Quizlet. This is the one that I use. Uh, I just made flashcards for things. I've made, uh, looks like I have... 14,000 terms that I've entered um, into this. And and flashcards, you know, some, some classes it doesn't work, in, but sometimes it can be really helpful for some classes, and it did help me in some classes. Um, also for quizzing over the material, that can really help too. Another thing that I found is re really helpful for me is that um, I'm, an, I'm a, um, an oral learner, which means that I learn by, by talking. Uh, if I can't talk something out, I have a really hard time retaining it in my memory. And it's hard to find people to just sit there and listen to you while you talk. So, and, and I had a really hard time talking to the mirror and talking to the wall. So one thing that was motiv motivating for me was to just talk it out to YouTube. And so I started a little YouTube channel and started recording myself teaching. And that helped me quite a bit in um, learning because even if nobody watched the video, I learned by making it. And then actually it helped me later on too because I would review the material and it would just bring back all the memory of everything that I just taught. And so I think if, if people would start recording themselves, explaining the material, and then when they review their notes, they can, they can view themselves on double time explaining it. It'll bring back all the memory of when they actually knew it really well. A couple last things to remember. You can pause the video and read over these. Um, just remember this stuff. This is important. Uh, big things that are going to jeopardize your success are going to be emotional burnout, sleep deprivation, being depressed, feeling overwhelmed, not knowing what to do next, failing to periodically review material, not distributing time effectively. These are the things that, that really hurt people. Um, you don't realize, you think, well, it's gonna be my ability to understand it. Nah, it's more likely to be something like depression or, or, or sleep deprivation. Uh, that's gonna be what's gonna be hurting you. So make sure that you, uh, that you, that you don't let these things happen to you and you, you do the things that are gonna allow you to not get emotionally burnt out like exercising. So uh, other couple, other couple of things that can jeopardize your success. You just look over that if you want to. Just this quick review. 
Um, coming away from this video, what do I want you to do? Um, I hope that you will sit down and make some goals uh, and, and make them intention-based goals, like not, um, oh, I just want to pass. Now, that doesn't work. You know, what? ask yourself the question, what do I need to do to really get good grades? And um, write those goals down. And then make a task list of all the lectures that you need to learn and all the things that you need to do. And once you have that task list, I hope that you'll put together a, a, an Excel spreadsheet, similar to the one that I made, and totally and completely plan on recording all of the time that you spend setting these lectures and tallying it up and keeping track of it. And um, and in the in your time that you, you plan for yourself, I hope that you include in there exercise, sleep, healthy meals, and set aside some time to actually plan out each week and plan out each day. And then I hope that you'll utilize study effective methods or effective study methods. One thing that I, I struggled with was when I went to medical school, you know, I thought, well, if I just read this enough times, I'll, I'll understand it. That's not the case. Uh, reading will get you good at reading. But if you don't, if you don't actually practice pulling the information out of your head, you're not going to get better at pulling the information out of your head. And I hate to inform this, but inform you this, but in order to be able to pass a test, you have to be able to pull the information out of your head which means that if you want to get better at that, you need to practice it. So practice explaining it, practice writing it down, practice you know, taking uh, little quizzes and, and flashcards, those kinds of things. That'll help you to utilize effective study methods rather than just reading it over and over and over again, which I found is, is really not effective. They did a distribution. They, it looks like uh, you know, 20% of your time should be spent putting information in your head and 80% of your time should be practicing pulling information out of your head. That's the optimal... Um, optimal for learning. So best of luck to you. I hope that was helpful. And, uh, and